Hi there! My name is Kjell and I'm from Oslo in Norway. I work in the Ministry of Justice behind me here and my main job has to do with crisis communication regarding the corona situation. We do a lot of work that has to do with communication tasks including arranging daily press conferences and also Facebook Live with the Minister. My main job though is to head a team of 12 uh, crisis communication specialists from a variety of ministries and we work together every day to uh, monitor what's happening on social media and we also write a daily report that's sent to all ministries about what's happening on social media every day in Norway and internationally. We have seen many challenges and one of them, I think one of the biggest ones, has to do with how to combine messages that might be conflicting. We have learned a lot during the last few weeks and I think one of our best achievements is to see how well we can work together as a team. Even if the team members come from various ministries and they have varied backgrounds and ages. We have worked together on a lot of various topics and challenges but it's fun to see how well everyone works together towards a common goal. Hi Peter and all my AMPA friends uh, in Australia, New Zealand and around the world. Bob Jensen coming to you from uh, outside of Washington DC in the United States. Just wanted to share some of the things that I've been doing during uh, the COVID-19 lockdown here. Uh, through the wonders of modern technology I'm able to keep in touch with all my colleagues and friends using Zoom, Skype and the old-fashioned teleconference calls. It's been really great to uh, share ideas and lessons learned and hear what's going on around the world with our fellow uh, emergency managers. Um, there's a lot of things uh, that we're seeing. The number one problem here in the United States is the inconsistency of the messaging uh, across all levels, uh, up and down, and across the states. There's a lot of uh, political intrigue and this is something that makes it very hard for professional communicators uh, because they need to really be looking at uh, uh, what, what else is out there, whether it's disinformation, fake news, uh, whether it's politicization of the processes. Um, it's something to be thinking about, and I think we're going to see a lot of lessons learned on how to deal with that uh, once we're through this. And I know we're going to get through it. There's some uh, really great uh, uh, things that are happening along the vaccine line. We might not see it until next year, but we're definitely going to see something. So let's try and all hunker down and get through this. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Hello, Emma. My name is Chris Webb, and I'm talking to you from the heart of London, from the Strategic Coordination Group. The SCG is part of the resilience response to dealing with emergencies and disasters that unfold across the capital. The SCG has been leading and coordinating and directing the response to COVID-19 with first responders and partner agencies. One of the challenges which we've, ha we've had is that the SCG is normally set up for a very limited period of time to deal with those initial few days as a disaster unfolds before the response is handed back to the, rec the recovery cell. Normally, comm support is provided to the SCG by the lead operational agency. With coronavirus, there were so many agencies involved, it was unclear who would provide that support. Therefore, a decision was made that the SCG would need its own comm structure. I was appointed as the strategic communication lead for the SCG in mid-March. And not only did I have to deal with the crisis, I had to build a comm structure within 72 hours. So we went from myself to a team of 20 within three days. The structure has been broken down into a central comms hub here at our headquarters that provides support, coordination amongst partner agencies that operate across the capital. I also coordinate and chair the multi-agency conference group which is made up of first responders and key partners to agree key messaging, coordinate messaging and comms products across the partnership. We have comms professionals embedded in the various sub and business groups that operate 
including business, mortality management, volunteering and community. And we have an elected assemblies unit that actually provides support to elected members, be it from national MPs to local politicians. The SCG Comms Hub has made a real difference to the way London has responded to the COVID-19 crisis. I am proud to be part of this fantastic operation. We have made a real difference to London and Londoners. I look forward to sharing more information with you in due course. Thank you. Kia ora everybody, my name is Naomi Luckett and during this COVID-19 response I have taken on the role of Group PIM with Bay of Plenty Civil Defence. One of the hardest things about this role, the most challenging things about this response has actually been being in self-isolation and working remotely. I'm very used to working in a crisis centre that is full of people and really frantic and you get a lot of energy from that. Um, so managing my mental health has been a priority. Um, I'm very proud of the role that I do. I love being a crisis communicator. Um, it gives me a deep sense of purpose and I really feel like I'm making a meaningful and positive contribution to the response, which has really helped my mental health. Um, I'm very proud to be one of five million New Zealanders that has stayed home, stayed safe and united against COVID-19. We are currently at alert level two and I look forward to our ongoing success. Bye everyone. Hi there, I'm Desi, and I am in the sunny mountains of Utah in the United States. And Empa and Peter had three questions they want, that the team wanted me to answer. And the first is, what is the role you are doing on COVID-19 communications? Um, I'm currently deployed with the Field Innovation Team virtually at my home um, with a lot of other members working in 26 cities around the world on innovative solutions to this global pandemic. Uh, specifically a communications initiative that we've been working on that we would love to have you join is called Crisis Creativity. The hashtag is Crisis Creativity on Twitter and Facebook. And people are developing one to two minute videos uh, while in quarantine to promote safe practices and help flattening the curve, but also um, promote all of us uh, on this earth doing continuing to be productive members of society and to helping uh, further our future together um, this all developed out of looking at historical plagues of quarantine and even a volcanic eruption and how people used art science invention and literary pieces during that time to develop out because they were they were in their homes or cottages or in places and could not um, go out too much in public um, so from Newton, who developed uh, while in quarantine during the plague, the laws of gravity, uh, to Mary Shelley during a volcanic eruption that happened in 1815, she ended up writing in 1816 Frankenstein because we had this global cooling of the earth due to the particulates from the volcano in the atmosphere. We thought we would bring this challenge out of crisis creativity to the community uh, in the globe. And we've got submissions from a Norwegian Viking who teaches us off the grid practices and a New Yorker who is using a Finnish weave pattern with material uh, to, uh, to demonstrate the Fibonacci spiral, which was inspired by her dad's artwork to, to Los Angeles puppeteers who are using their puppets to build out um, safe practices with personal protective equipment. So great a movement. We hope you join us with crisis creativity. Uh, second question is, what has been the biggest challenges and surprises to you? The biggest challenge is we don't seem to have enough time in the day. We've been deployed for eight weeks. It's April 27, might be more than eight weeks. I'm not sure I'm doing my math correctly, but we've been here for quite a bit of time, at least two months, and we don't have enough time in the day. So that's been what's surprising during this deployment for COVID-19. Third question is, what has been your best achievement? What are you most proud of? I'm most proud of the innovators around the world who are doing things to innovate in real time during this global pandemic. Uh, we're big fans of people coming up with solutions and finding a way 
even when we have these obstacles. And uh, one great example is the way people are innovating personal protective equipment. Uh, there was a gentleman on our team who, out of household materials, whether it be Tyvek suits or face masks, he, bu he built out a face shield that was made out of a plastic uh, soda carton, clear plastic soda carton to go around, and then a baseball cap that attached. And this is just a great way, again, to show that as a community, as a globe, as a world, uh, we can innovate in real time in disasters. So thank you so much, Empa and Peter, and have a wonderful conference.